Hi there, my name is Matt Osgood. This is the fourth in a series of videos looking at using a Presonus Studio Live Series 3 desk in the studio. The first few videos in this series have covered the basics of getting sound through your desk, setting up monitor mixes, integrating the desk with Studio One, and using Presonus remote control apps, QMix, Universal Control Surface, and Studio One Remote to give you full control over your hardware and your software, so do check those videos out if you need to. In this video, we're going to look at how to use the FAT channel to process your monitor mixes and make them sound awesome, but then also how to print that processing to your track if you want, and how to link together the desk DSP processing and the native processing within Studio One, which is a truly awesome feature. So let's check it out. So I'm joined today by my friend Sam, who actually wrote the song that I'm recording. I'm going to be tracking some acoustic guitars uh, today. Sam, how's it going? All right, thanks. Good to be here. Great, good. Um, we've got the Presonus PM2 mics set up on Sam's guitar. I've set up a rough monitor balance, got some headphones, and we're ready to go. So I've got Sam's input channel here, the PM2 stereo pair. Uh, Sam, can you just play some guitar so I can set an initial level? Now, this is a pretty chilled song. I want a really intimate sound to the guitar. So as well as close miking it, I'm going to add just a touch of compression to bring out some of the details in the performance. And this is where you'll see just how amazingly well integrated the desk is with Studio One. So here's my acoustic channel with the PM2 uh, as the input there. And at the top is a fat channel insert. Now this is not processing that's happening within Studio One. This is all going on in the desk, but I have complete control from my computer. So let me demonstrate that. If I select the EQ here, now you can see also on the touchscreen that if I start grabbing some of the EQ nodes and dragging them around, then it changes on the desk as well. And this is bi-directional. So if I select a different node on the desk and then alter the gain, then you can see that it's changing within Studio One as well. Now I have the option, if I want, to print my processing to the track. So you see this little fader icon here, um, which is the Apply DSP to Input Signal button. So if I click it, it turns yellow. And this would mean that any processing I applied in this FAT channel would be recorded. So you could maybe apply a bit of EQ to sweeten the signal, some gentle compression, and then you just record that process sound to the track. Now, if you've been around recording for many years, you'd probably be immediately familiar with this way of working. Back in the day, if you were in an analog studio with maybe only a few outboard compressors, you'd typically track through them to make the most of the processing you had available. Now there is of course a downside to that way of working. If you say over compress the signal on the way in, there's not a huge amount you could do afterwards. So Presonus have come up with a solution that I think is just amazing. It gives you the absolute best of all worlds. So you can process your monitor mix to make it sound awesome and then play back your recording and hear it with exactly the same processing and still have full control over the sound. You don't have to commit to an EQ or compressor setting unless you really want to. So this is how it works. Honestly, when this was explained to me, it kind of blew my mind. It's just so well thought through in terms of the perfect integration of hardware and software. So, as I said, this blue fat channel insert at the top is processing that is happening on the desk. Now, if you know Studio One, you know that one of the great things about the workflow is how you can drag and drop pretty much anything. So, if I just turn off the um, Apply DSP button and then drag this blue Fat Channel Insert into the Channel Insert section. A fat Channel Insert appears, as you might expect, but it also has this little blue chain icon in the title, which is labelled Link to DSP. So what's happening now is that the desk is still processing the input signal. Studio One is now processing the playback signal, but these two inserts are 100% linked. 
and providing exactly the same processing using the same coding across both the hardware and the software. So if I open up this insert, so that's definitely, this is the one that's running on the computer. And if I, again, make some changes with the EQ, then what's happening on the desk mirrors exactly the same changes in its processing. And this is so cool. So I could be pretty heavy handed with the input processing if I wanted without needing to commit to it. And I can hear playback that sounds exactly as it did when I recorded. And I don't have to laboriously copy settings across or anything like that. It's just there. They're, they're linked and it just works. Now, as you'd expect, if I did want different processing for recording and playback for any reason, then I could just click that chain icon and it decouples the link between the desk fat channel and the Studio One fat channel. But for now, I'm definitely going to leave that link in place. Now, another awesome feature of the desk is that included with the purchase of the desk is the Fat Channel Volume 1 bundle, which contains five vintage modeled EQs and six compressors. And because of this link that I've just demonstrated, you also get those processors as software plugins, which is great. So I'm going to use a couple of those processors now to sweeten the guitar sound. As I said, I could print the process sound if I really wanted. But to be honest, with the way that the hardware and software fat channels are integrated, there's not really any need to do that. So let's go ahead. One of the EQ options is a Baxendahl EQ, which is here. And I love this EQ. It's got really gentle curves, which makes it perfect for just adding a bit of polish. It's not a surgical EQ at all, but that is not what I need in this situation. Just want to add a hint of top end sparkle, a little low end boost to give the guitar sound more depth, and that's it. So, Sam, could you just play for a second whilst we uh, tweak some settings? Uh, and now I'm just going to add a touch of compression as well. I'm going to use the Everest C100, which is an LA2A style compressor. Um, so if I turn that on, I'm going to set the release to medium and attack to medium as well, just so it doesn't grab too hard on the guitar transient. Sam, if you could just play again. Now, as you can see, the processing that I've applied is linked. So when I'm mixing the track, I've already got this EQ and compression going on to give me a starting point. Now I can continue tweaking this, or I can scrap it, I can start over again. This working method gives me maximum sound quality at every stage of the process, while also keeping total flexibility and control over the sound. Now, Sam's been waiting patiently while I've talked you through all of this processing, so I'm not going to make him wait any longer. Uh, Sam, uh, let's do a take starting at the first chorus, and off we go. So Sam and I finished tracking guitars a couple of days ago. Uh, we're now at the stage where we can record some vocals and I've got Gemma in the studio with me today um, to do that. I've already set up her monitor mix using Qmix and a little bit of reverb on there. And I'm now gonna set up some EQ and compression on her monitor mix that will still be there when I play the track back. Let's do that now. i 
So there we go, I've set up just a little bit of EQ and compression on Gemma's vocal. We've now finished tracking the whole song, so I can simply drag this fat channel insert down into the main channel insert section, and this can be my starting point when I come to mix. And I hope that's given you some idea of the possibilities of the integration between the Studio Live Desk and Studio One. The flexibility this gives you is fantastic. You can probably think of a whole load of applications for it. For example, if you were recording a whole band live, you could take your time properly EQing and compressing the drums so everyone's monitors sound great, but then that could potentially save you a bunch of time at the mix stage by giving you a great starting point. And of course, you're not committed to it necessarily, but it could be really helpful in getting you at least part of the way towards the sound you're looking for. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to give you an overview of door mode, where the Studio Live Desk functions as a really flexible control surface, as well as still functioning as an audio mixer and as an interface. And then in the final video of this series, we'll come back to this song and I'll show you how to use the power of door mode to really speed up your mixing and your editing workflow. Thanks for watching.